So now we're going to go over one of the probably, in a sense, one of the most difficult things about Moodle, but also one of the most rewarding, and that is the ability to create quizzes in Moodle. Um, the nice thing about the quiz setting is that it allows you for grading to be automated. If you use multiple choice, true, false, or responses that are exact responses, uh, so it can be automated, technically. Or, even if it's fill in the blank, it allows you for uh, have a timed exam or quiz. And it allows you for every exam being different. What do I mean by that? Uh, when you create a question bank, which is separate from the actual creation of the quiz, you will have the ability to then add um, a number of questions from a larger question set. So you can tell it, pick five random questions from this set of 20 questions. And that will help you to uh, create a random or different quiz every time, if you wanted to. They also, the order can be randomized. So question 10 could be 15 in one quiz, 20 in the next, 18 in, the no in another. Uh, also, the answers within the question, if it's multiple choice, can be randomized so that even though the answers, the four choices are the same, A is one time B, then it might be B, C, it depends, it varies. Um, so that allows for uh, reduction in cheating and other things. Uh, on top of that, you can set it so that even though it's automatically analyzed or automated, that you can set it so that the responses are not released automatically, but that there is, um, they could know their score automatically because the computer can do that instantaneously, pretty much. But uh, if you wanted to, you can tell it, you know, release all the scores at the same time on Sunday so that no students are worried about looking at their score and telling each other the answers, but rather let's just wait till Sunday and Sunday they get all the answers. So you can do it that way as well. So how do you do that? Well, you go to uh, activities and you add a quiz. And it tells you here, but it's a good mini test for reading assignments, uh, self-assessments. Again, uh, timing, being able to set a time limit is one of the benefits that it has. So evaluation, let's put. OK. And then the description is optional. Again, the name is not. We can set an opening in the quiz, closing the quiz. So you can set a, time, a, a date let's say a week for them to answer the quiz. When they answer the quiz, they'll have 30 minutes to answer this quiz. This um, allows them maybe a grace period if you wanted to as well. Although, there we go. There is a grace period. So to use the grace period, you have to allow them to, um, to submit it even when time expires. So usually open attempts are submitted automatically as a default. I think that's a good default. Uh, grade attempts. This is pretty important. For some reason, the uh, automated or the default is unlimited attempts to a quiz. I like to have just one attempt. And so there's grading methods, not the highest grade, but it's the grade they get for their attempt. Um, here, I like to shuffle questions, but again, you don't have to shuffle questions. Um, shuffle questions and que uh, shuffle within questions. Okay, so then here I'd like to choose every five questions so that the pages don't have too many questions, but they don't have very few questions either. I'm sending less PHP requests to the server. Here, uh, if this, here when you attempt, they'll know the attempt, whether it's correct, and marks if you want and during the attempt to know that. I tend to prefer that they don't know some of the data after the quiz is closed, so they'll have to wait until the 23rd to know some of these details, for example, their oral feedback, what was the right answer, etc. So how do I do that? I have to unclick these two categories so that they don't get the answers, the right answer right away, but they gotta wait. Um, you can only do this if there is a due date, if there's not a due date, then they will never know their answers. So there have to be a due date for the quiz to eventually close and show them the answer when they go to the gradebook. So here you can set boundaries. This is pretty common, the feedback option. So when they get 100%, you can tell them 
fabulous. Uh -huh. And then here we can say gray work for 90%. Okay, so you can set more boundaries if you want to. I'm just going to set two boundaries. And then let's return to course. Okay, so now the quiz is created, but if we open it, it has no questions. Uh, it has 30 minutes, that's when it's open and closed. Go to edit the quiz, there's no questions there yet. So you can either add the questions here one by one, or you can bring them from the question bank. And we allow you to import, export, and create categories. I like using categories so I can organize my questions. Um, so let's go to categories for a second. So I may create categories such as chapter one, it could be a category. Chapter 2 could be another category. We're going to have two questions per category, so you can have an idea, an idea of how it can work. Um, to having more than one question per category. And we're only going to add, in this time around, true and false and multiple choice. Okay. So then we'll select the category. Again, I went to question bank. Now I click question. Okay. And we select category, in this case, chapter 1. In this case, these are all the types of questions. When you click on them, it'll tell you what they can do. What one of I mean, they can calculate, so you can have automated calculations. You can have short answer. You can have true fall. You can just have a description, which is not a question, it's just for some information if you want to. A multiple choice. In this case, let's create a multiple choice. So we're creating one. Question. What? did I eat for lunch? Today I went camping with Gapstan Cogs and I had a hamburger. So here in the question text, this is not what the question is. So we'll copy that and we'll copy it here. This is just question one. Information so that you can locate the question later. Okay? The actual question, what people see is in the question text. I don't tend to use feedback, but if you want to give them feedback, just after they answer the question, they can get the general feedback, and there's feedback depending on the answer. So I ate an apple. I didn't, so the grade will be none. I ate a hamburger. That's true. So there, the grade will be 100%. I ate um, chocolate. I didn't eat chocolate today either. Okay, so those two are no. And if you wanted to give partial credit, because maybe some there were some chocolate in my diet, I could give it 50%. You can also give negative credit for a wrong answer. And you can add more choices. And here you can have a combined feedback for correct responses, partially correct. So you can improve. I don't like giving a penalty for wrong answers, so um, I'll put zero. Uh, but that's for multiple tries anyhow, but let's leave it that way. Then you can give hints as well, save changes. So I just created a question one and that's in chapter one so we'll go ahead and create a new question and again let's use multiple choice and then we'll put question two again this is just the title so create some questions uh, remember go to the question bank on the side don't just uh, create them directly in the quiz. It's better to have them organized, in my opinion. Um, and then we'll put... What did I buy Ellie last week? She really wanted some perfumes, so that's what I got her. So that's the right answer. She wanted a perfume bottle. So we'll go here, perfume. That's 100%. Okay. Um, choice two will be cheese, that's none, and number three would be wine. I did buy some wine, but let's say no. Um, so those are my three answers. I'll put this back to zero. I don't use the hints. Okay, so I created two questions for that category. Now we'll create two questions for another category, for chapter two. So you can see that's a number there. Again, I was creating questions for the first chapter only. 
and I created two simple questions, both of them multiple choice. Now we're going to go to chapter two and create a couple true-false questions. There are no categories right now within chapter two. So we'll create it, we'll use true-false. Question one. I am six foot two inches. And then, and that's false. I am only six foot. So false. And then you could put response feedback. If false, yes, I am. Oh, well, let's put in the unit of feedback. I am only six foot. Six foot stuff. Okay. Then we'll create another question. So again, create a true false. And then question two. I am 30 years old, copy that in the question text, that's also false, I am 28 years old, at least for now, in a couple of years it'll be true. Okay, so we created now two questions per category, and we had two categories, so again, if we go to categories in the question bank within settings, we'll find categories. Um, we'll find no categories initially, you can create it, you can create categories within categories, so you can have chapter 2 uh, easy questions, chapter 2 hard questions, chapter 3 uh, easy questions, chapter 3 hard if hard questions, so you can create subcategories within, so right now I could create easy questions hard questions and again, that's within uh, chapter two, and I'll do the same with chapter one. There's going to be zero questions in those because I'm not going to spend time on that right now. But easy questions. This categorization is helpful then when you're trying to create a quiz by putting a random number of questions. If you're certain of which questions you want to ask, and there's no latitude, uh, and there's only ten questions, and you ask the ten questions, then this is not as useful. Okay, so we're going to have to bring that up. Actually, let's just delete that and create it again. Chapter 1, hard questions. Okay. okay, so now we created the categories. Um, Make sure you get familiar with this. We're about to go back to the quiz itself. This is a good example of the breadcrumbs, by the way. The categories, question bank, evaluation, quizzes, Moodle, SSW. So that's how the breadcrumbs work. This is a good example of it. So now I'll go back to the home page, go back to the topic we're working on, and I'll stop here for a minute um, before we add the questions to the quiz.